Hey everybody, welcome back to the next installment of Blended Conversation. Our season is winding down. We are so glad you were able to join us. We hope you've enjoyed these candid conversations with the artists, uh, the people behind the art, and today is no different. Um, today we're doing a little different. We don't have a performance artist today. Today we have an art curator. I am a big fan of her work. Uh, she does an incredible job and we're going to go ahead and let our guest introduce herself. Juliana? Hi Shay. Hi everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. So my name is Juliana Fordero. I work as consulting curator for the city of Pompano Beach. I'm also an independent arts professional. I'm founder and director of Nomad Arts Projects. Whoa, that's wonderful. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So thank you for coming on the show. So let's jump right into it. Um, Juliana, tell us where you're from and if you were a part of the art world in your uh, country of birth. Well, I uh, I'm, I was born in Bogota, Colombia. I lived there from the first 20 something years of my life. And I did have a lot of art uh, when I was growing up. I had influences like my parents, they run a graphic arts company. Um, so way before even Photoshop was invented from the 80s. So I grew up with the letter set and I, I grew up with photographic cameras. I don't know if you know, like before PowerPoint, uh, people used to pay. They had these cameras in this um, angle. And so you will do the slides with a specific type of paper and exacto knives. So there was always creativity in my house from the early age. And from my grandmother, she used to paint. My aunt, she had a studio in her house. I also learned that my grandfather, he actually came through Ellis Island back in the 20th century ago. And he oh. studied arts in the um, School of the Arts in Boston, went to work in marble in Vermont. So it's kind of on my veins and I did grow up with some um, artistic sensibility. So it was always a conversation in my own childhood and even when we moved back here. So it's, it's been always in there. <laughs> Wow, I always find that so interesting because I'm an artist, but I got into art late, right? I wasn't necessarily surrounded by art like that. Um, of course, music was a big part. I think music was a big part of like everybody's household, right? While you're cleaning up, while you're cooking, <laughs> <laughs> having parties. Yeah. But as far as having parents who were like arts inclined, I didn't have that, so that's great. And uh, I see pictures of... Um, artwork and murals and statues all the time uh, in travel photos and where you're from. Um, I think I got into, it's Bogotega, right? Where you're from? Yes, Bogotega. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, I see such richness and, uh, you know, Afro-Colombians, right? Um, that have this whole, like, I don't know, do you call them villages or, or what? But it's always art in those places. And I can't wait. I, it's so funny when you said where you were from. I was like, oh, I just said I wanted to go there just the other day. Fantastic. Yeah, please, please go visit. I mean, I, I left 20 years ago. I haven't been back. So I know that there has been a lot of change, lots of tall buildings and architecture, but I know that there is a lot of culture there. They have a beautiful, when you go, they have the Museo del Oro, which is the gold museum. And it's just a striking, it's beautiful because you get to see all the pre-Columbian work that was made um, in gold and there's like a this valve wow. that you can go and see so it, it's fantastic there's a lot of culture and they have international theaters uh performances on the street um like an annual so uh, performers from all over the nation and from all over the world come every year every two years and there's performances on the street so in in fact like the city and a lot of the country has a lot of investment in the arts awesome Okay, well, with that, uh, let's move on to traditions. I know you haven't been back in a while, uh, but you did spend, it's like you spent half your life there and half your life here, right? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so tell me about some of your favorite traditions from your uh, place of birth that maybe you continue now or maybe that you remember as a kid. Well, it's so interesting because when I look, when, when I look or when I think about traditions, 
you know, when you're doing them, you don't know that you're doing a tradition. You're just following what your elders are doing. And so when I think about a specific traditions that belong to the country, it may be different, but there was something that in my family, we used to do every Sunday uh, with my grandmother. I will stay with her almost every weekend and she will create these, it's called arepas. I don't know if you ever had that. They also have them in Venezuela, but it's like a, a corn grind type of bread. Okay. And uh, my grandmother will do that from scratch and then she will do hot chocolate. My aunt will come, my uncle will come <laughs> and we will have this traditional, it's traditional from the coffee region, you know where the coffee plantations are. Mm -hmm. That's where my grandmother was born. She okay. moved to Bogota. So she brought this tradition of this type of breakfast with her and like almost every Sunday, the family will just have this breakfast with her and we'll spend time together. So I didn't know that was a tradition that she brought food from that specific region. And then, you know, she's gone, she passed away. My uncle and my aunt, they passed away. And that obviously disappeared when we moved here. But um, that's something that I missed and, and I love. And you know, that's a tradition that we did. So right now what we're doing, since we're back in Florida, my in-laws live here, my parents live here. So we're kind of instilling to my kids that value of family. And even though we may not have traditions that we know exactly, there's food from Colombia that we serve every now and then, or, you know, a weekly, there's a dish that we do. So traditions keep being, how do you say it, embedded in what we do every day, yes. but we just don't realize that we're following traditions. Yes, yes, yes. I think um, a lot of times, like you said, it's easy to not recognize uh, that we are doing things that will be rooted in our families for, you know, years and years to come. You just do it, especially when you're a kid. And then you get, you get older and you realize, I was just talking to someone um, last night and we were talking about how we had no cell phones. We didn't have all of that. So you had to play board games and you had to, you had to do this kind of stuff. And then I was like, oh, but my kids don't know how to play X, Y, Z because they have electronics and they have things. So I think it has to be a conscious effort to realize what your traditions are and to keep them going in some way, right? Um, so that your family reflects the things that you love and the things that you are made of. Um, That's true. That's true. Yes. With that, I think this is the first time to give our audience a glimpse into what you do. So we are going to share a video, a sneak peek of one of Juliana's curated exhibitions. Um, we hope you enjoy. If you enjoy the artwork, uh, please visit pompanobearts.org. You can find all of our venues there and our times so you can come take a look at what she has put together now. So enjoy this sneak peek and we'll be back. I'm Juliana Ferreiro and today we are at Bailey Contemporary Art to have a sneak peek at The Longer the Feather. The Longer the Feather commemorates Black History and Women's Months by featuring photographic work by Walter Griffin and paintings by James Lee St. Louis. In Griffin's photographs, he shares his fascination with Sunday church hats which began at an early age when he observed a hat maker create a hat from scratch. These portraits of women wearing striking hats were originally shown in 2004 at the Guthrie Theater in Minneapolis to accompany the play Crowns, and it demonstrates Griffin's long trajectory as a photographer. When you come to see this show, you will see that the photographs are arranged by owner. In this case, we're looking at four of the photographs showing the hats by Marion Vaughn Lee. And you will see and you get a sense that we're not talking only about the hats that they're wearing, but in this case is the whole ensemble. And a perfect example of this is this green outfit when her hat is green and her outfit is green in different tonalities. With the thematic of hats, I was really excited to be able to incorporate these two hats that belong to Blanche Ely. That way we can add local history to the exhibition. 
The Blanche Ely House Museum is the former home of renowned educators Blanche and Joseph Ely, which was restored to showcase the social and cultural milestones of Pompano Beach Northwest community, while also serving as an active cultural hub, offering a variety of art making and storytelling workshops. James Lee St. Louis presents a new body of work titled An Anthology of Art, which he defines as an exploration into storytelling through painting and poetry. His portraits depict black lives and experiences as a way to add to history and as an act of healing. With this understanding in mind, James Lee displays a range of stories through one central theme of black identity. They were created while at his short-term residency at Bailey Contemporary Arts, where he was awarded a studio to create new works. The paintings are to be seen as complementary with the poems that accompany them. His goal is to ensure that artworks created by black artists are included in the history of art. All right, and cred. So with that coming off the video, what was it like? Well, first, when did you decide to become a curator? <laughs> okay, this is really interesting because, um, and I can go backwards. I mean, it's such a funny, it's a funny thing. I mean, when I got here in this country, I came with a BFA and um, no network, no connection whatsoever. <laughs> so it's been the result of many decisions that I've taken. So the role of a specific as a curator started pretty much almost three years ago with Pompano when I received a phone call. They were looking for someone They heard about my work for what I did um, at the Frank in Pembroke Pines and they needed someone to help them out for a few weeks and four years, almost four years ago, I'm still <laughs> doing this and, and I loved it. So I worked before in aspects of exhibitions, but here what I'm doing is the role of the curator and managing the organizations in Pompano, but also keeping in mind that because I'm doing this for the three venues that the city of Pompano Beach manages, I need to invite guest curators. I need to try to listen to, to the community and do call for artists. So it's not the people in my network, the artists that I'm friends with, it has to really reach out. So when I took on this role, I've been learning about of growing more, listening to the community. And like I said, I mean, partnering with um, guest curators and I learned also the value of planning ahead of time. So I'm already looking at <laughs> things in 2024, even listening to things that are happening right now and how can I incorporate that into the schedule uh, coming up. And it's also very important to me to make sure that there's communication between the venues somehow, so that if someone comes to the ally and see a show, that then there's they can go to Bailey and then they can see some sort of connection. So it's been a great opportunity. I'm really learning a lot and I'm learning a lot about um, South Florida because I moved here 20 years ago. I went away and then I came back five years ago. So in short, I became a creator when I took the role in Pompano, but I've been in the arts administration for longer. That's a uh, great. What I heard you say is getting and capturing that voice in the community in which you are working in. I think that's so important. Um, and I think a lot of times we can miss that, right? We can hear our voice so much that we forget about the people who are in a part of this community. So I appreciate you being a Pompano native. I definitely appreciate you uh, listening to the voice of the community uh, in giving artists opportunities to shine and to showcase their work in the place they live. So that's great. Um, okay, so, <laughs> so right. So now that we know you're a curator, kind of, I was always in the art, but the curator kind of happened by chance, right? You're killing it, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the transition. Was your transition hard from Colombia to the U.S.? Um, did you find it easy? Uh, talk to me about that. Well, you know, it's very interesting because, you know, in South America, I mean, the United States, you guys export so much culture through sitcoms and music. so. 
I grew up accustomed to, you know, your sitcoms and Disney Channel and the Mickey Mouse Club. And so wow. you know, you know, certain things about the American culture. And of course, there's the trip from Colombia to Disney World. And I actually went before moving to Vermont for an intensive month of learning um, English. But when we moved here, then it's different because you're not a student. I wasn't a student and I wasn't either a tourist. We just moved, we left everything uh, behind uh, given some circumstances. And without BFA didn't mean anything. So I came actually, one of my first jobs here was to vacuum the offices of 411. I mean, you need to eat, you need to work. And I was like, you know, a title in the arts with no network meant pretty much nothing. <laughs> so that it was it was hard it was hard but as people start knowing um or uh, in particular myself they start knowing like my work ethics and I was a hard worker then I became a manager of a kiosk you know these in the malls yes, yes. like a little fast food <laughs> so I was making the crepes and I was working 70 hours a week but you know the sense of responsibility I was doing all these shifts sometimes they needed an extra so I was I was burning my eyelashes, then got an opportunity at Barnes and Noble in the music department, keeping all these CDs back when there were CDs. Back when there was CDs, right? <laughs> I'm dating myself here. <laughs> but yeah, organized. And so I realized, you know, I have this arts degree. This is before, you know, Miami Art Basel came. And because I didn't have a network, I was applying to art exhibitions, but the art exhibitions didn't have any concept back then. I'm not saying there wasn't a network. I wasn't just able to reach. I didn't know where tap it was. Tap into it. Yeah. I, yes, I couldn't tap into it. And so I saw myself, you know, with my paintings that were very conceptual next to some flowers and beautiful landscapes, but the exhibitions themselves were just more like art contests, you know, best in prize, best landscape. So that's when I decided to go back to school and I realized, you know what, I don't want to be like, I'm an artist. I know there's people that are stronger than me in terms of art. So I switched uh, careers and I went, decided to go to arts administration uh, in Florida State. So it was, it was hard, but it, teach it, it taught me to more about gratitude. I always be gra grateful but more about uh, gratitude, humility. Like when you see someone doing any type of odd job, you don't know their background. You don't know where no. they come. They may be a scientist. They may be a PhD pro, we know, you know? So always, every time I meet someone, I keep in mind their background. And pretty much because I, I went through that. And in the other sense, I caught up and I said, you know, in these 20 years that I've been in this country, I'm at a place that I was like, you know what? I, I did it and I'm proud of, of this person, this older me, 20 years ago, that was vacuuming the offices of the, you know, information center. Uh, look wow. at me where I made it, right? And look <laughs> at you now. That is so great. Um, wait, before we continue that conversation, because I do want to continue uh, that conversation, we're going to look at another sneak peek. Um, great. Yeah, and we hope you enjoy. Hi everyone, welcome to Sneak Peek. I'm Juliana Ferreiro and today we're at the Pompano Beach Cultural Center to have a look at the exhibition, We Are Live. We Are Live, Somos Vida is an exhibition organized by the Latin American Art Pavilion in celebration of International Earth Day. It observes the ancient traditions that pay worship and commemorate the Mother Earth in appreciation for the provision of natural materials such as wood, mud, and stone, which were used for the construction of buildings, furniture, and home accessories to support the permanence in the planet. This exhibition addresses issues such as overpopulation, water pollution, and invites to the protection of flora and fauna and the control of toxic gas emissions, among other issues. From the wonderful artworks in this exhibition, I want to highlight this one, Polimito. It is a painting that is in large scale. You can see it goes as far as the eye could look if you were in the actual nature, but it invites us to slow down. How do I know this? When we look at the painting, one of the first things that you see is the waterfall. The waters are coming fast and raging. Then 
your eye travels with the waterfalls and then you encounter this rock with a snail tiny on top of the rocks and then your eye stays there and then you see the waters all calm and then you go back again and it really invites you to not only take this painting in but when you go back to nature be like the snail step down and take your loading Another piece that I want to highlight is this one, porcupine. It doesn't take you long while you're looking at this wooden piece, it has these spikes, to realize that it's a porcupine. After looking, your eyes will wander on this, at the front of the piece, you're gonna find a small nose. And so this is really an abstraction of what a porcupine will mean. And for me, I had to check the title and indeed it was a porcupine. So I loved how I think a lot of times, right, especially, uh, so I'm born and raised here in America, uh, Pompano. Uh, I travel a lot. I'm looking to travel the world more, right? Um, I find that life only feels as big as the things you expose yourself to, right? That's um, right. Yeah, so I always find it interesting uh, when people migrate over and become citizens here, I'm always so interested in their life back home. Um, because like you said, you just never know. I think um, for me, I'm really excited about maybe trying an expat community somewhere um, outside of the country for a while. And I'm not sure if it's just because of the current state of things uh, in the country, or is it just because I like to immerse myself in the culture of where I'm traveling to? So I love Airbnbs. I love local <laughs> coffee shops and, and places like that. So I think that's so important. Like you never really know where someone is coming from um, when you see them. So it's always important to be kind and um, you know to be mindful that we're all different. Um, that's we're right. All, yeah, we're all going for the same thing, right? Uh, the yeah. lifestyle that we desire and to be happy and to be joyful in things we do. So I thought that was a great <laughs> point that you made. <laughs> cool. Yep. So we talked about some traditions over in Colombia. Have you picked up anything uh, in America that you would consider like a new tradition or that you hope your kids continue that you uh, started once you, you know, begin living here? Yes, and it's it's very interesting because when I moved here, I mean, we don't do Thanksgiving in Colombia. It's such an American mm. tradition. So when I was working in retail, I was the one picking up the <laughs> chips on Thanksgiving because everybody wanted to work on Thanksgiving and, you know, you know Black Friday. Mm -hmm. um, but the more, well, the, I love history. So sometimes I'm conflicted about the history of Thanksgiving, but a city celebrated now. The fact that there is not an exchange of goods, there's not a gift, there's no really nothing materialistic, but that you can sit around the table and be thankful. To me, it's it's been fantastic. So and it's and somehow it's my husband's favorite um, holiday. I think for the <laughs> for the same reason. So I started really um, valuing Thanksgiving. And when I was in grad school, we were part of an international community, and then we were having Thanksgiving with friends from. Uh, Greece and Germany and we all were able to partake and so to me that's a tradition that we keep very much um, alive even though it's very American it's just the fact of being thankful you know so let's yes. celebrate what we have absolutely so tell me is there American food or is it mostly Colombian <laughs> <laughs> um, you know I think it's a twist uh, we we do like the turkey, but I put some um, prune gravy to make it twist. I mean, mm. I grew up with like Hawaiian pizza. People hate it. I, I love, love Hawaiian pineapple pizza. pizza. I love pineapple pizza. Yes. <laughs> Let's do this. So so um, it's it's a mix. But my husband he loves mashed potato, but we have mashed potatoes in Colombia. So I guess we made a good compromise. Right. Uh, we love the pecan pie. Um, we do the turkey. Christmas is something else. C Christmas, we go full Colombian uh, with uh, tamales, but the, uh, the tamales in Colombia are different from the Mexican tamales. Okay. With a, with a leaf and you boil them, it's, it's, it's different. I have, I don't know 
what would be the name in English for that? Me neither. Have a name in English? Yeah, but Christmas but I like we go Colombian. <laughs> 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 yeah, but Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving to me, it's uh, it has a lot of meaning to it. Awesome. Yeah, I can definitely um, relate to that. Uh, everybody's heard jokes about Black Thanksgiving. <laughs> And <laughs> how fun it is, how how wild we get, you know, and we get together and we eat, exchange that, um, like you said, that spirit of thankfulness and the love uh, that sometimes you miss in the hustle and bustle of everyday life, right? Like people know you love them, but sometimes life happens and life just keeps going and you don't always have the time to actually show that. So I love... Um, you know, I used to love Thanksgiving a lot more than I do now because I like to mix Thanksgiving up. So I'm a very adventurous eater. I <laughs> love food. I love food. I love food. <laughs> so what do you do? So what, a lot of times, like, you different? know, a lot of times we'll say what we're going to do this year. Sometimes it's seafood. Sometimes it's traditional soul food. Sometimes, you know, we go... We add some Mexican flares to it. We add some Italian flares to it. Um, just because my taste buds get a bit bored. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yes. I mean, the and my dad, eating, my yeah. daddy is Haitian. So we also incorporate a lot of dishes from Haiti and things like that, which makes it so good and so different and so diverse. Um, that sounds so, so delicious. <laughs> listen. <laughs> is it a place to be? We're going to exchange plates this year. <laughs> oh my god i don't know i don't know if you're gonna like what i do but well, i will definitely take some of your plate <laughs> <laughs> perfecto so um we have just a few more questions here i think this is the perfect spot to slide another exhibition i am a fan of showing art showing the work and then we'll come back with our next question enjoy the sneak peek Welcome to Sneak Peek. We're today at the Bailey Contemporary Art Center for Access. Axis is an exhibition that features artists from Search, one of the artists that participated in Art Lit 2020. For this piece, each artist worked their styles on a four sides hands on sculpture, the brainchild of Galen Todd Traxler who is also featured in this exhibition. The result is a dynamic mix and match sculptural piece where visitors can playfully arrange the images, blending the distinctive style of each of the artists. Additional artworks in the exhibition highlight the range of themes that each artist has developed. This piece is the center of this exhibition and we gave the name Axis because the pieces actually rotate. It was created by four artists that painted live during Art Lead 2020 at the Pompano Beach Cultural Center. When they finished this piece, you can see that each of the styles characteristic of them, it was pretty clear. But as the pieces rotate and as the people, as the people visiting explore and rotate the piece, you will see how the styles blend. What is interesting when you start looking at art, maybe for the first time, a piece that you encounter for the first time, is how do you want to experience it? What is really interesting with these pieces is that at first sight, you will see explosion of colors. When you start spending more time looking at the piece, you're going to start looking at the different items and elements that appear into it. For example, we start looking at a face with a tongue, we start looking at a face of a flamingo, wearing sunglasses, there's obviously a heart. What is really interesting with this type of art that is inspired on a street art and graffiti art is the use of the black outline, and in this case it's very strong. There is humor, but we also have to acknowledge that there may be secret codes that maybe the artist wants to give to the viewer for them to decode and get a new meaning for them.
Perfect. So with that being said, coming off that video, tell me how does your life influence your curating style. So do you pull from pieces of your life? Uh, is it more of like a, a world, a world view uh, or what? Tell me. <laughs> it's, it's very interesting because of course I have things that I'm passionate about, that I'm interested about, but I have to watch a lot of the news also to see what's mm. current, what is trending. And in Pompano, we do have this open call. So people do submit the portfolios. Um, regularly. So um, what I do when I'm planning and I'm about to do this in, in a couple of months, I print everything that I've received and even articles that I say, hey, this article, this, this artist called my attention and I start seeing trends. So it's like, okay, like when I did, um, of course there was COVID, but I was planning to take over um, the institutions with the space related. So it mm -hmm. was because of the Mars expedition. Um, so that's what I try to do. I try to see if even the artists in the submissions, is there like a trend? Is there a, a theme that crossover artists? And then I start either putting group shows together or if I put a group show together, maybe I do an also call to artists because maybe there's other artists that are interested mm -hmm. in that thematic. So I pull from from my personal life, things that interest me, but you know, like I said before, I really don't want it to be three galleries with what I think or what I, you know, what I yes. think is good. I embed everything. So I'm pretty much paying attention um, a lot. And like right now I'm organizing an exhibition. I'm working with a guest creator on modern quilts. So right now I'm doing research on, okay, I want to pair these with a traditional quilts exhibition at the ally so i'm in this moment right now of looking at the artist so it there's a lot of there's a lot of back and forth and a lot of research and that's i think that's something that it, what makes me super passionate about uh what i do because there's sources from everywhere and one exhibition inspires three more so right. that helps me really keeping up with the two years I had crazy <laughs> schedule, but it helps me see it helps me see the overall you know yes, uh, what the are the picture. trends Yes. Um, and for those of you who are watching who may not know uh, about the Ally, uh, here in Pompano, we have the historic Ally building that was once the home of the Allies who migrated over the Pompano and they house musicians. And it's a historic uh, black landmark here that has been turned into a gallery and concert space. So again, pompanobeacharts.org, you can see all of our venues uh, that we're discussing here from Baca to Ally to the Cultural Center to the historic Blanche Family Home. Uh, and you can get a, you know, a sense of who we are here in this community. Um, I have one more question. Uh, you said something in this previous response. Oh yes, the research. I don't think people realize, so I'm a poet. And if I'm talking about something that has historical basis, or if I'm writing a play or whatever the case may be, you have to research because you have to be knowledgeable. You don't want to present something to the world that's not historically accurate if you can help it. So I appreciate you doing uh, that research and quilts were huge in African-American community, especially during slavery, escape marks on those, they stitch messages for each other on their quilts. Um, to communicate, you know, during that time. So uh, I appreciate you bringing that to the ally. I think that makes so much sense. Um, and it just goes back <laughs> yeah. to what you're saying about listening uh, to the community. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And the thing is that the community will be able to be reflected with it because I'm also trying to see if I can get some of the quotes that the people in the community center do. So it's really uh, a 360. But yes, with each exhibition, I'm learning a lot from what it means to the community, what it means for the social aspect of the United mm -hmm. States and what it means also for now. Even even the quilts are historical, but you know, they just celebrated the hundred years of the G's band quilt makers. So there is, it's always things repeating themselves. So yes, good. always, history always repeats itself. We're gonna take a look at one more video and then we're gonna do one more question and then we'll be done. Hopefully I haven't held too much of your time. The conversation has been great. So if you're watching, Check out the last sneak peek of Juliana's work. Welcome to Sneak Peek. Today we are at the Pompano Beach Cultural Center for Vanishing Florida.
Vanishing Florida is an exhibition that celebrates Florida's historical landscape by featuring Kevin Boldenow's photographs. Capturing the essence of the state's flora and fauna and the changes that take place in nature, these images illustrate the beauty of the untouched landscape and remind us of the importance of knowing our history. This exhibition has a balance between architecture and landscape. One of the images that shows the architecture is this one, Lost Hope, showed in 2004, and it shows in black and white an image of a house that is going in decay. You can tell that people are not living there and how slowly nature starts to reclaim it. Another image that caught my eye in this exhibition and I really like is this one, Solitary, shot in 2010. Is this image of this tree in this large body of water, probably a lake, probably at the end of an, of an ocean, and it's very dreamlike, it's very oneric. It has a quality on the print and on the focus. It's a little bit out of focus, but you can see that that is intentional and that's what I like. Okay, last question. So we know you're a mother. <laughs> we know you're a degree holder. We know you're a curator. We know you're an artist. We know you're a wife. Tell me, how do you balance work and art and life? <laughs> and life. You know, it's, it's crazy, but I think that it goes back to all of us. How are we doing this all together you know i'm just <laughs> registering my kids again for the second year of homeschooling which i never thought i was even going to you know I, we survived the first year and you know looking at you know the COVID and everything that's happening we said yeah, okay let i work from home so it's a benefit that i can do this for my kids and uh, it's just like it's like project management i mean i have this crazy excel sheet with the all the exhibitions <laughs> from the year and i have the calendar that i can look every day or to the right and the clock is right on top so it's really to me it goes back to time management uh, and in, in the end i think really having open conversations i mean my kids are little they're five and seven okay. but explaining to them the day to day this is what we're going to do and so we're keeping tantrums to the limit and they also I realized you know at the beginning of the pandemic I had the kids March 2020 and I was just like this is madness I need to work and get <laughs> get stuff done and the kids were going crazy and I realized you know what I could get mad and I did I would get angry and I was like ah you guys need to be quiet mm -hmm. they were four and six they wouldn't and I realized Who's, who, who is worse in this scenario? Me, because then I'm angry and I don't want to be at that level. Mm -hmm. So to me, I tapped into this unbelievable resource of patience that I didn't know I had. So lately, I, I just took a picture. I had, they were building Lego towers right next, like right here. <laughs> and I don't notice anymore. And they're talking and they're building all these things. I'm having conversations, I'm playing. And I learned to zone that out and really focus. So. I don't know how I do it. I take book pictures and I Julia, send it to like, my mom and it's like, yeah, how are we all doing this? I don't know. She's <laughs> like, just, all in all, I really don't know. I just do it and... <laughs> and it gets done and nobody knows, you know, like in the end you go to the pump and you see the exhibition is so well done. Like people will know that, you know, a few hours ago I, I had just stepped on a Lego and I was crying <laughs> because it hurt, you know? <laughs> they, yes. They, they don't you. know. So yeah. I definitely life, get it. Life is life um, and arts and it, it's all together you know i don't think we can't separate them so just embrace them and find your zen that's what i did i found my zen and just surf it 
write it yes. right the way art definitely <laughs> I, they say life imi- you know <laughs> art imitates life yes. you know i think sometimes life imitates art right uh true it's all this circle that we do of you know i'm a wife of a mom of five myself so exactly how do you do it you know um it's, you know there's they're from 15 to 11 month twins uh so we have a very <laughs> <Shay>. <laughs> All right, talk about project management right there. Each yes, kid it's, with like you own. said though, it's all about um, time management. I used to not use my calendar enough. Now I can't stop using it. I'm putting everything in my calendar, like just between the sports and work and trying to be an individual and a human and trying to spend time with your spouse and then trying to create right. new works of art. It's, uh, you know, it, it's difficult. So my, my passion to uh, kind of decompress is traveling, whether it's a day trip somewhere, whether it's just a couple of days at a hotel locally, whether we're going to a different country, uh, a family trip. It's just finding those spaces and times where uh, everything goes and finding time for everything. So I know, you know, at this time, this trip might just be for my husband and I, and then this trip might just be for my older kids and I. Maybe there is no one else but us. Maybe it's just me and my friends. So, you know, while I'm here, I just try to find times to enjoy what I love. Like you said, I am working on my patients. Um, <laughs> I am working on my patience and uh, just trying to be better every day. So I'm not really sure how I do it. I tell people, God, my husband and my will. That's how I kind of get everything done. You know, a great support <laughs> system. <laughs> that's so, true. That's true. I mean, that's all I got, you know, at the end of the day. And, uh, you know, believing that we can do it, that we can work together as a family so that everybody achieves their goals. And it's not one-sided that parents are achieving their goals and the children are left behind being just children because before they are children, they are human beings that we are responsible to raise to be productive and decent humans uh, in this world that they will come in. So we all get it done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's fantastic. And and to value the kids' voice, you know, yes. that they know at a little age that their voice is valued and it's listened. It's that's very fantastic. Valuable. It's yeah. very valuable. So uh, tell us how we can find you. How can somebody find you on social media, your Instagram, your Facebook? Yeah, well, the, the best way, uh, we have a website, www.nomadartprojects.com. And that the handle on uh, Instagram is at Nomad Art Projects and, you know, Nomad Art Projects also on Facebook. That way you can send me an email, get in touch with me, follow us, the different things that we're doing for Pompano and other galleries in town. All right. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Juliana. For this month's edition of Blended Conversation, we have one more episode in the season and it features yours truly. So tune in. <laughs> I switch sides in this last I can't wait episode to watch that one. of the season. So you'll get to know a little bit more about me as well. Thank you always for joining us for Blended Conversation. And remember to be kind. And as much as we are different, we are very much alike. Peace.